In this screencast, we're going to explore ways of processing the text within InDesign. What I'm showing you on the screen at the moment is Midsummer Night's Dream simply placed into a, uh, an InDesign document uh, in, a, in a raw state. So this is the text that I've, I've um, received, a public domain text. Um, as you can see, it has no styling. Um, there are spaces between uh, at the beginning of each line. We've got um, character names in uppercase uh, on the first line of that actor's speech, and um, we've got various other aspects to this that we will we will want to change. Um, so the subject of this screencast then is just to explore different ways that we can use our the features of InDesign, particularly search and replace. Um, and, and, and also grep, which I, I also use, and even a script, um, which will help us to change the case of the characters' names. Okay, so let's um, let's just explore this to begin with. I'm going to use the find dialog box here, um, find change dialog box, and you can see that along here I've got text, grep, glyph, or object, and I'm going to just use grep in this case. Grep is a way of uh, setting up a pattern, looking for a pattern uh, and searching for that pattern, possibly repeating over that pattern on the whole text and then um, replacing that with something else, possibly even a style. Um, now, um, what we have to be careful of is that we're definitely going to be uh, searching the whole document, uh, not one particular selection. So that's the first thing to remember. And also the other thing to remember is that you can, if you set up a query, um, a, a, a find what a routine, if you like, you can save that um, for future use. And indeed, if you go into the this uh, pop-up box here, you'll see that there are already some things that have been saved. Um, as InDesign comes straight out of the tin, as it were, you already have a few things that you can use straight away. Okay, so what are we trying to find here? What we're trying to find is um, looking at this these character names down here on the left hand side, not the first one because the first one has already had some uh, some changes applied to it because I, obviously I was experimenting with that. But he, here we are down at the bottom. This is what we're what we're trying to change. The first one, Theseus, has already been changed. So this is how I want it to appear: the word Theseus uh, on its own line, and then the next line of the speech. Uh, would be on the, on the, on the second line, um, not as we see here. Theseus, go Philostrat. We want to change that so that it looks more like this. So how do we do this? Well, we look for a pattern. And the first thing we can say is um, that we're looking for something that happens at the beginning of a paragraph. So we're looking for locations, beginning of paragraph, um, and then we're looking for two spaces. So I can actually just put those spaces in. Um, and then I'm looking for an uppercase character. So under wild cards, you can see any uppercase letter. Now, we, in order to determine that this isn't just the beginning of a, of a, of a, of a sentence or a, or a, or a verse line, um, I need to then find um, the second uh, uppercase letter. So we go here to, again, wild cards, uppercase letter. But now in order to determine that this is a complete word, we're now going to say, okay, repeat that now. Uh, we're repeating this, so going to the repeat section, we're repeating it one or more times. Uh, now the key to this is that you need to test your find what. So we actually just fi hit find, and you can see it's found the first um, occurrence of Hippolyta. Um, so that's worked, um, but we're going to add something to it. As you can see, each of these character names also has a full stop and a space after it. So I'm going to search for that. Now a full stop uh, or a period, it has a special meaning in grep. It means any character. So in order to utilize this, or in order to find that, we have to escape it. So what that means is we have to use the backspace, or backslash, as I say, backslash character, uh, like this, and then the character that we're escaping, which in this case is the period. Um, then we're following that by an with another space. So let's actually just do that again. So there you are, it's, it's found that, it's found that. Just do it a few times, just to be sure that we're um, selecting or, or searching and finding that particular pattern throughout the whole text. 
OK, so now what about the next thing? Is what do we change that to? OK, to change that to something, um, what we need to do first of all is to determine what it is that we found and what it is that we want to keep. Well, what we actually want to keep is the character name itself, not the spaces in front of the word and not the full stop and not the following space. So what, would that, what that basically means is that between the first uppercase character and the remaining uppercase characters, we want to define that and we just simply do that by putting a parenthesis around that section. OK, so now we have that, we've determined that is our, uh, uh, the piece of text that we want to keep. The rest of it we're going to throw away. So we're changing it to, what are we changing it to? We're changing it to the what we call the first found, in other words, found one. Now, that, as you can see, that puts dollar one onto the screen. OK, we're changing it to that. We, we're, we're getting rid of all the excess material either side of it. But also, we want to follow that with a, pay, uh, a paragraph break. So again, we can just choose our end of paragraph like this. So we're changing it from that to that. Let's just see if that works. Let's just do one more find and change that a, a one off. OK, so as you can see, we've uh, we've now achieved that. We've got um, the word Theseus is now on its own line. Um, now, there are a number of other things we can do at the same time. We might, for example, want to uh, change the format of this, but I'm going to do this in two steps. It makes it a little bit easier to understand. So let's actually now hit change all. So throughout the whole document, I'll bring that onto the screen, you can see that we found 499 uh, replacements. Okay, so now every one of those character names uh, is uh, successfully positioned at the beginning or on its own line. And then the next line, as you can see, is um, is the first line of our prose. OK, now we haven't finished yet because what we also want to do is we want to change the um, the style of that particular uh, line, which is, is now a paragraph. We want to change the style, so we want to apply um, a style so that that's displayed differently from, let's say, the lines of the prose or the lines of the verse. Um, so we're going to conduct the search again, but this time we of course don't need uh, the space at the beginning because in fact there is no longer one there. Um, there's no longer a full stop and a space after it um, but what there actually is is also a, a paragraph break so we can we can just f find that as well. Um, now I'm also going to I'm just going to remove this here because we don't want to put in yet another uh, paragraph break at the end of it um, but we're just going to find Let's, in fact, thinking about it, we don't really need that uh, that break there. So I'm going to just find uh, a few of those just to be absolutely sure that we've we've got the right thing. Um, now, what we're doing here is we're simply changing it to itself effectively, but at the same time, we're going to apply a new format to it. Um, so here, under Change Format, I'm now going to select a format um, that I've already created. I've already created a format uh, for this. Uh, where are we? It's called character. Okay, um, and that character style, I'm just going to go to my paragraph styles just to just to show you what that is and make one small change to it. So in my paragraph styles for character, the 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 name that the the style that I want to apply to this, um, I've currently got some. Well, a lot of basic things here. We've got some different uh, fonts. We've got a different size. Um, but what I'm going to do is to change this to small caps. I'm going to change this to small caps. And I'm also going to uh, turn off, for the moment, my baseline shift, which I have uh, already uh, added to this. Um, we'll also change the character color, just really just so that we um, show immediately that we've made that change. I know we can come back to this. It's not um, it's not absolutely ideal. Okay, so now we're having done that, we can now uh, find. Let's find next. Okay, and then change that. Okay, now we should change all. And as you can see, we've got five hundred and two of those now, and they've all been changed. Okay, so we now have um, 
almost what we need but you'll notice that although I've applied a small caps style to this um, style for this paragraph style it's not displaying like that at all it's simply displaying up all uppercase characters that's because it is effectively typed in in uppercase characters or as in this case this, this was probably taken from a um, a, a text, a printed text and scanned in so it may well be that it's come from that but we don't really want that, we want to be able to control the style of this so what we really want is title case for this um, now in order to achieve title case the only, of course we could go through one at a time and make this change um, and I can show you how that works so for example if I select the word Theseus at the top of my page here um, and go to type um, and then go to change case you'll see that I have something here called title case and that simply changes it now and now as you can see we have um, small caps applied to this um, but um, we don't want to go through and do every single one of those there's nothing unfortunately under our fine change dialog box change to that gives us that ability so what we have to use now is a script um, which we can then use to go through and, and, and automatically make these changes. Now I should warn you that scripts in the way that they work they're basically going through one after the other in, in a sort of batch process and applying some kind of change but there's really very it's very very difficult to undo something like that because this is something that's going to happen over and over again um, and undo although we have multiple undos in InDesign we would probably in this case have uh, four or five hundred times where we'd have to undo so it's totally impractical so therefore it is quite destructive um, so it's very important that we therefore save this so I'm just going to save this um, as um, number two okay so what I'm planning to do now is to use a script um, to go through this text find all of the character names again and change them to title case uh, now when you use scripts there are a number of scripts uh, available under the scripts menu here you can see that we have two um, folders one is the application uh, folder with some samples in it either in Apple script or JavaScript um, so InDesign itself comes with quite a few different uh, scripts that you can make use of um, but in fact I've modified one uh, that already existed in there um, and you can apply and add scripts to your own version of InDesign by simply placing them in this user folder that we're looking at here. Um, in order to do that we need to click on that or right click on it and then say reveal in finder. That immediately goes to the place where that uh, scripts panel folder is which of course as you can see is empty. Um, so I now need to um, add to it and I'm just going to bring my, uh, my, my, my other uh, window open here and just drag this um, script into that window and it's called change case and it's a JavaScript file okay so that's now in there and if I go back here you can see immediately that that's brought that into um, into my user folder now in order to make use of this um, we also have to utilize uh, the, the find uh, dialog box again so we'll bring that up and we'll just run through exactly what we had before so we're looking for uh, the beginning of a paragraph go to grep beginning of paragraph here which is a location um, and then we're looking for an uppercase character letter I should say another uppercase letter and then we're repeating that as you can see it's gone to the beginning of the document uh, it's found the first occurrence of that let's just go to the find next so we know that we're, we're, we're on to the right thing um, now we don't need to do anything else to this because then, in fact what then ha happens is that the change case um, script which I'm going to call upon now um, makes use of uh, the find 
what box. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I'm going to have to modify the script because it doesn't because it's displaying properly everything in it. But um, the top uh, line is the one that changes the type, make, makes it go to title case, uh, and we again apply fine to that. Um, and then you can see if I just do one, you'll see that it's it's worked. And I'm now going to hit change all. This will take a few moments because obviously it's got to th go through the whole document. Um, but you'll see that that should have now successfully applied a, let's just zoom in on one of these here. Turn that off now. And as you can see, we've now um, achieved that um, in, in, in every case. Okay. Thank you very much.